Welcome back everyone to another pixel art tutorial. Uh, this time I'm going to show you how to do a low poly pixel art 3D. So it's a low poly model in 3D with a pixel art texture on it. Um, so I was looking for props that I could make um, and uh, I found in this painting I found a cool little bench that I want to make. It's simple but it has a, a fun little shape. Uh, the top lid is a bit bigger. The There's a cutout in the side so I thought, why not make a video about this? So to estimate how big this is that I'm going to make, I thought like, okay, this is uh, 50 centimeter. This is one meter. It's 50 centimeter high and 50 centimeter deep. Um, that's a bit of an approximation, but I'm just gonna uh, keep it keep it simple. So in order to make this in 3D, I like to start in 2D. Um, I'm going to start with um, drawing for myself how the side, the, well the, the front in this case, is going to look like. Um, so I've got a little texture space set up here, 64 by 64. My bench is um, 32 pixels broad, 50 centimeter, uh, 1 meter, and um, 50 centimeters high, which is 16 pixels. Pardon me. I'm going to fill this with um, this brown, again, I'm using the DB32 um, palette, as usual. Uh, you can find that if you Google DB32. So, the top lid, I'm going to make two pixels thick, and on every side I'm going to cut off one pixel to make it look like the... Uh, to, to um, make the, the lower part a bit thinner than, than the lid. So I'm going to start with the usual. In this case I'm not gonna follow the the usual rules I set for myself with the light coming from the top left. I want to try out what it looks like with the um, with every corner having the same rules, having, having the same highlight. Um, so the lid is gonna cause some shadow on the, um, the smaller part. There's gonna be some highlight on the sides. Um, I probably do. I want to do that. No, let's let's not do that. I don't want to have a, a shadow here because that just kind of looks weird. It, it looks like it's tapering, but it's actually just straight. Um, now, as you see, there is a, there's a cutout here, so I'm gonna also draw that. Uh, make an estimation. Uh, I know that it's not uneven, so it needs to be, in the center needs to be two. Let's see if it's centered. It is centered. This I do want to give a little bit of shadow. Um, so this is very boring. I think I'll make it look like it's divided up in two planks here. It's 14 high. So. If it would be in the middle, one plank would be here. Give it a highlight. Like that. Um, probably put some. Do I want to put a nail in here? Put some nails in here. Look like looks like it's uh, it's connected. Oh yeah, um, that's what I was thinking. Put the nails like this. I was wondering why, why that didn't work out, but I didn't count this as part of this plank. But with the shadow makes it a bit confusing. So I think this would be um, a good side view of what we're actually making. So the next I'm going to look at what the top lid is going to look like. It is 32 by 16. Uh, make it normal wood color. I'm going to give it highlight around the edge. This is too big to be one thing, so I'm gonna divide it up in two planks again. I know this is 16. Mm. Do that. Mm. I'm gonna give it highlight from one side though. Even though that doesn't really make sense because the highlight goes round, but whatever. Nobody's gonna notice. Right? Right? You won't tell anyone, right? Um, so next is the other side. 
so I know that it's going to be this broad. So let's take it is going to look about the same as this. So I'm just going to take this, rotate it around, and from there, I cut this bit off. And do I want to have two nails in there? Yeah, sure. But that was very quick, actually. Um, let's see. What is next? So we have the all. We have the side views, and we have the top. Now we have the bottom left to do. So the main bottom thing is actually the bottom of this plank. I'm gonna hollow it out as well, so you can actually toss the the little bench around and see what's on the inside. Um, so this is the bottom of that. It's gonna be dark. I do want to give it a little bit of light on the corner because these are. Light, lighter there. <coughs> so the underside of this plank, um, the sides of the bench are against that. So starting here, here, this dark band is where the bench is going to be. I actually want to have this be too thick. Um, so this is where wood is going to be against and then there's this which is exposed. I do want to have the corners be a bit darker. This is there is a line in the center. Like that. Yeah. Um then there's um since it's hollowed out, there's also the opposite sides of this but on the inside. And since it is the same height as this, but it's two thinner on each side. I'm gonna fill it up with this color. dark there maybe have a little bit of highlight so that's the the opposite side of this manage the space a bit so you have to think about where you're gonna put your textures when when working with uh, uh, UV mapping so what else is there um, there's the inside of this, which is the same height as this, but two cut off. Have just give it the same treatment as, as the other side. Simple and quick. Now we could do something with the with the nails coming out from this side, but nobody's actually gonna see that. What is important, I feel like that at least the seam comes back here and I think I also want to work with a bit a few dots of darker color um, that now the same here So it is, is very simple inside, but there is a bit of detail to it. So with this in with this in place, I can actually start um, texturing. Uh, well, actually modeling, not texturing. So I'm going to this is on my second monitor. Um, I'm going to save. So I've just saved it to my desktop, and let's move over to 3ds Max. So uh, normally, if you open 3ds Max, you have uh, this view. I uh, I don't like all the sides. I just want to work in in, in perspective, so I'll do um, just make it make the make the one bigger. To get started, uh, I want to start with two boxes. It um, so this is the lid, which is 100 um, uh, by 50 by two pixels. Um, now, since one meter is 32 pixels. Um, Two pixels is uh, two times three point two centimeters, so this is six point four. And then there is another box, which is um, thirty-two pixels minus two, 
which is 93.6. I calculated this beforehand because um, I feel very pressured if I do it live. <laughs> so this is the size of that. It's just uh, a bit of calculator. Um, now I want to make sure that the, both of these are actually in the origin. So zero, zero, zero. And this one is going to be not at zero, 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 but at the 43.6 height to put it on the exact height where I want it to be. So to be able to start modeling and then changing the shape of this, I'm going to convert this one to an editable poly. It'll swap me to the second tab, going to attach the lid and remove a few things, namely this, this, and this then um, you can use the numbers to change your selection mode. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, I want the border of these two. I use control to connect to uh, select them both and I want to bridge them. So that has just connected all that. Then this one I'm gonna put back. I just needed to make sure that the inside was gone. And this is the very basic of what we're actually working with here. Um, I'm going to take my texture and put it on here. As you can see, this is messed up. Um, it is sharp though, which uh, isn't by default, but I've gone into Customize, Preferences, and then Viewport, and changed my driver to uh, Direct3D, one of the legacy settings. and um, That should um, make everything sharp instead of it, it automatically assuming you want bilinear filtering or whatever which is handy for most things but not if you're working with uh, pixel art textures so we need to make sure that every surface is mapped onto the right bit of the texture that we want and by how we do that is um, oh, hold on. so I click this do UN to select unwrap open the UV editor um, again we've got the same three things vertex edge and polygon we want to select polygon control A to select all of them mapping flatten mapping normalize clusters off don't know why but that's what works um, and you can see it's very zoomed out now um, but using but, but if you if you use imag imagination you can see like oh this top oh we're gonna put that here. So I'm gonna get started with the bottom left thing, keep it structured to the actual uh, front, get the front, uh, rotate it around, go to edge selection, make sure that I've got the top at the top, which I don't. So rotate it around twice, and it's gonna look the same at the back, so um, get that one, that is at the top already, so I'm just going to put them over each other. Uh, it's not exact, it's fine, we'll figure it out later. So next there is this edge. Uh, it's the wrong way around. All right. Same on this side. I'm calling it an edge, but it's actually a polygon, but it is the edge. <laughs> Confusing terms sometimes. Right, put that on top of each other. So I'm using middle mouse to pan around, by the way. That, that's the initial confusing thing. And alt, middle mouse to uh, move around like this. Uh, so that is uh, my side. So this is the, 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 the front side. Then I want to have the top, the top lid. Which doesn't really matter which way it is. Um, then we have that side. We want it. Well, I already saved it, so I might as well do it like this. This one, put it here. This one, put it here. Go to edge mode, check if that's the top. That's the top, yep. That is also the top. Um, overlap them. They want to be here. And we want to do these two sides. Okay. Now these are probably that way up. So I'm rotating them like that check them that's the top that's the top overlap put 
system here. It's all just estimate for now. We'll uh, we'll get into positioning them correctly later. Now this one is um, this edge, and this one I'm gonna put inside there. Um, so that's it. This, this actually the bottom, and then we actually already have the basics. Um, these two we'll get into later on this bit because I'll cut it out later. Yes, later. Um, so now it's way zoomed out, so we need to scale it down a bit. I like to just put the cross where where it's going to be, otherwise you're repositioning several times, making it smaller. Oh, that's too small. Oh no. Oh no, okay. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to make it too small. Um, so approximately a bit smaller, put here even a bit smaller. Alright, so um, now to position things correctly, we want to first put our texture in the back here so we know what we're doing. Uh, I'm going to pick a texture. Uh, this is on my other screen, but I'm just selecting the texture that we made. Uh, this is the one, right? Yeah, because uh, this is the third take and I made some mistakes before. <laughs> now, to put everything on it correctly, now we're just moving things around uh, inaccurately. We could we could sort of guess, but it's not going to be nice. What we can do, however, get it to snap the pixels. i turn this off. We only have pixel center snap, which is counterintuitive because we're actually snapping to the edge of the pixel, but yeah, <laughs> let's start putting things in place. Um, so they're all still kind of not on a pixel. So just moving it around a bit will snap it onto a pixel. I think that actually just immediately got right. So if you if you think in pixels beforehand, most things will just snap in place exactly the way you want them to that there, is that correct? Yes, I think so. So you can already see it's it's, it's mostly I if you put this thought into it beforehand it is very easy. I didn't align these very well though. So that's where a bit of work is coming in. Selecting these, put them in the right place. And there we go. This is actually already looking very well. Um, what we want to do next is um, we want to adjust the model again. And if we if we go and try to do that, we'll get a warning like, "Oh, you're you're doing things that you should be doing." But we're just gonna collapse everything. Yes, fine. Don't worry about it. Now we're going to change the model. Um, I've uh, switched to edge mode, select all of these, and I'm going to connect them. We want to have, oh, no, nope, don't do that. I have three lines, and I'm going to pinch them. That looks almost exactly right. Okay. Now, go to vertex mode so what is this oh it's a new thing I'm not used to that well that works <laughs> um, no uh, now you can also so you have the one two three four five but you also have um, the letters under it which is uh, this is move this is move this is rotate and this is scale I want to right I, that's how I did it before I textured it. Right, I can do it differently. Um, select these. If you if you want to go round, you select a line, hold shift, and it'll detect like, oh, which ones do you want? I want to connect these, right click this to reset it. I want to slide it down here. Yep. Then I want to go and um, do I want to go and cut there? Um, it'll 
cut off half of the line. I actually want to do this differently. Go back. Sorry. <laughs> I want to start with two lines. That's where I want them to be. And do this again. Oh, doesn't seem to be detecting this this time. So you how you can also just do that. I want to connect it again. Because I want to have the line go from here, and then straight, and then here again. I no, don't slide it, I want to pinch it. Like that. Now, I will do the same thing again. Connect this. Reset, reset. Slide it down. Like that. And then connect these lines. Um, so I just went back to vertex mode by uh, one, selecting two, connect, connect, and do the same at the back, connect, connect. All right, great. Now I want to remove this. Um, then select go back to um, edge selection mode, select these six and connect, no, bridge that is not, yeah, bridge that's not correct, but I hmm. guess we'll need to fix that um, shoot that first and then, no so this is the bottom. I want to put lines in this as well. Okay. So I just want to make sure it's connected properly. It's got all the lines. Um, I want to connect these. Two of them. Uh, this is too thick. Can I then also do that? Yes. Maybe this works. Okay, nice. It slides in the right direction. I yeah, that's not how I wanted it. That I'm just thinking about that black dot. It's not what I wanted. Perfect. So what I'm gonna do then is select um, actually, and I'm going to remove these for now. So I want to move these up. I can do that by extruding in the opposite direction. And the height of that is um, 43.6. So minus 43.6. Now it's created this, but we don't want these. Um, We'll just select these two, bridge them. That, huh? <laughs> nice try. Is that actually how we want to do it? It's going to be difficult now, isn't it? Um, because I want to have these lines in place. So instead, I'm going to select these. Hold Shift pull them up. Um, now I want to align these by Z. Can I do that here? Nope. That's a shame. Uh, just bridge them. Which? No. Yes? Maybe. So it's not exactly the same height as this. Okay. Now there's going to be oh, why these new tools <laughs> they change the program. Um I want to select these two. Why are you not letting me where is the selection thing? Select objects. 
No. It's not what I want. Um, Alright, let's do it differently. Select all vertices and just weld them. Okay, so these four got welded. Because if I didn't do this, um, these vertices weren't all connected. They were just separate lines and will cause issues with the uh, lighting. So while this is not perfect, this works for my uh, purposes. So now it's got the cutout. What it doesn't have is the good mapping for this. So we'll just go back to unwrap, open an editor. Oh goody. Just select these and break them. Um, our texture is still here. I uh, probably don't want to. We want to see what we're doing. It's a. Uh, it's handy if you have two monitors to work with, but I can't record on two monitors at the same time. Well, I can, but it doesn't work very well. Uh, I'm just gonna select all of them, break them, so I'm not dragging anything along. So that is there. I start with the big surfaces, I guess. So this. Oh, that's not nice. Uh, break, break it. Oh, that's a difficult one. Oh, that's difficult. You see, it's. Um, I can move this away. Here it is, right? With the new tools, like I'm used to working to the with the old, older version of Max. Um, it just allowed me to move this, but I can't seem to. Oh, oh, oh. E I know what I can do. Select this, this. Are these also? Yeah, these are also there. Just select all the new geometry, and we're gonna flatten mapping them. Tools. Um, no, first we want to make sure they're broken. It's not gonna work, is it? Mapping, button mapping. Okay, it seemed to work. Let's make it smaller. See, it, it's also always a bit of a puzzle with uh, with these programs. Which is fine, I guess. It's uh, it's good practice. <laughs> I think I selected too much here, actually. So let's just break everything. Do we want to break everything? It's not even broken now. What is this? This is the inside here. I'm gonna scale it to approximate scale. Like this, I think. Put it in there, put snapping on, and that's in place. Would have been handy. I'm gonna redo that. Select this as well. What? Right, control. Um, so I have the proper scaling in place already. The rest is already the proper size. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not practical. Okay. Now, just like this. Drag this over here. All right. Then we have these sides. Let's get started. Then. 
uh, rotate it, put it in place. Is it the right way around? Yes, it is. This one, rotate it, put it here, right way around. Yep. Where's these then? Oh, already did those. This stuff. Um, oh. Oh, I didn't. I didn't make. Hmm. Ah, it's fine. Put it on. I didn't make the hole in it, which is which is okay. It doesn't. I might just still put it on it. Let me let me finish this first. Uh, what's this? This is an edge here. Why is it so big though? Oh, that's, yeah. That's why it's so big. Connect this. Where's this come in then? Here. Yeah. Just putting the holes in the right place. Uh. Putting the pieces in the right holes. This doesn't look like it's the right holes, but. Alright, so let's just fix that real quick. Um, right, like that. Is that how I want it? Do this. Yeah. Okay, save the texture. Texture. This is again on my other screen. Sorry for that. And there we go. Nope. It's off center. <laughs> nice and simple little bench in 3D. Now I hope the video isn't actually 50 minutes again, but we'll see. Thank you for your time. Uh, let me know what you, what you thought of this, uh, if it was useful or anything. Thank you!